Hi, this is Andre from Jago Tool. I'll show you a few new features in our latest and greatest Jago Developer Studio 8. In this screencast, I'll deploy the Ticket Monster demo application that was developed in the Jago Developer project to Wi-Fi 8 running on OpenSUSE. The Ticket Monster demo app shows how one would implement a ticketing application using AngularJS front end and Java EE back end. The code for the whole app is located on GitHub, is available from GitHub. But the problem with that when talking of OpenShift is that the code for the web app is located within the demo folder. OpenShift, on the other hand, it expects, expects you to have a POM in the root of the Git repo. Otherwise, OpenShift doesn't know how to build your source code. So you either need to copy that demo folder to its separate location or create a fork of the demo folder only. That's what I actually did so that you can replicate my instructions. So in a first step, I'll clone my GitHub fork to my JBDS. I go to the Git perspective, tell it to clone a repo. And once the downloading and cloning is done, I'll have a project in my workspace. So now we have a Git repo, and from there we need to import the project within it. Back to the JBoss perspective, I see that the Ticket Monster project was imported to my workspace. To now have this deployed to OpenShift, I go to the context menu and pick Configure New Import OpenShift. In the upcoming OpenShift application wizard, I'll be able to create an application for my local project on OpenShift and have my local project prepared to run on OpenShift. So in the first page, I provide my credentials and then select the runtime for my project. I'm looking for the Wildfly, which I'll spot in the quick start. If you look into the details, you'll spot that the quick start, the Wi-Fi quick start, offers the latest final version, which is 8.1.0. In the next step, I provide the application details. It suggests a name that's based on the project name, which I have to correct since uh, OpenShift doesn't doesn't support non-alphanumeric characters for the application. I can also pick the domain. I have three of them. I pick the first one. And I can choose a gear, which is actually the physical resources available to your application, the RAM, the hard disk space, and the CPU. So I'll stick to the small, to the default one, which is small. And I could also enable scaling so that the application would grow in resources while the requests grow. In the all cartridges list, I actually see what cartridges are requested for that quick start. It could list the runtime plus add-on uh, quick uh, cartridges like uh, Mongo or MySQL or whatever. And when hitting edit, I could choose among available alternatives. There's only one Wi-Fi 8, so I'll stick to this only possible choice. In the next step, I see that the local ticket monster project is being prepared to run an OpenShift rather than create a new project for the application. And I also see that the wizard will create a server adapter for easy publishing so that I won't have to get down to git pushing, but will be able to rely on the adapter to do everything for me. Last step where I can configure Git settings and SSH keys is usually just fine by its default. When hitting finish, I tell the wizard to create 
the open source application. And then once this is done, prepare my local project to run an open source. Once this is done, I get the credentials for the administration console of YFY8. I can actually copy those to some notepad or whatever for later usage. I then get informed that my local project will be prepared to run on OpenShift, which implies modifications. I confirm those. And then I see that my local Ticket Monster application was modified. So to now publish this to OpenShift, I get to the Service tab, choose the Ticket Monster server adapter, and tell it to publish. I now get the dialog which shows me what modifications are present, which can then be pushed to OpenShift. I see that the git ignore file was changed. Double clicking will show me what exactly happened. Before there was only target in it, now there are uh, Eclipse specific settings directory, pro Eclipse specific project, and Eclipse Eclipse specific cloud path being excluded from committed. I also see that the wizard added a dot openshift folder with action hooks and configs. Special interesting in the configs is the standalone XML file, which is actually the configuration for the Wildfly server on OpenShift, which I could actually modify to my own needs. And we also see that there's a marker, Java 8 marker, which is actually an empty file. It tells OpenShift to run op uh, Wildfly using Java 8. And to have all this uh, published to OpenShift, I need to tell the commit and publish wizard to include all changes. And I'll provide a commit message. Once this is done, I can hit commit and publish to have the local Ticket Monster application uh, project published to OpenShift. I then get a warning that tells me that the remote history doesn't match the, the local one. So this is non fast forward. This is actually expected. Since we do a fake merging, we don't use recursive merge as in Git, because this is still not fully reliable in Eclipse. So we do merging by copying. So we need to tell the publishing to override the remote content on OpenShift. So we now saw the console popping up, which will sh uh, show shortly the output of the git pushing to OpenShift. And we could also have a look at the server logs where we can where we could actually see what's happening on the Wildfly server and OpenShift. In that tail files wizard I can actually modify the tail file options to eventually include more logs. And I can also choose the gears where my application is running. If your application is uh, scaling, you would have several gears and you could pick the gears to look for logs for. Once I hit finish, I get a new console with the server logs. I see currently the latest entry which said that Wildfly was stuck. This happened when I git pushed, when I published to OpenShift. I can now switch back to the publishing console which actually shows me that when git 
pushing, when publishing the OpenShift, there is a Maven build triggered. It actually downloads all the dependencies of my Ticket Monster application. And once this is done, the build process creates a war that it deploys to the deployments folder. on the Wildfly server on OpenShift and it will then restart Wildfly and have Wildfly spinning up my new war. So we now see Maven successfully finished and when getting back to the server lock I see that Wildfly is being restarted and it will pick the new war and deploy the new application. Once this is done, I'll be ready to have a look at my Ticket Monster running on OpenShift. Latest entry in the log is Wi-Fi 8 started, so I know everything is fine. I go back to my server adapter and tell it to show my new web app in the browser. And here we are. We have the Ticket Monster running on OpenShift. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.